Hi, I'm Tony Romano. I'm a botanist with the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves. And today it is a warm day in the first week of April and I am hiking through a dry forest on my way to see a very special habitat in Hardin County called the Limestone Slope Glade. Uh, so I hope you'll tag along with me and we'll take some time to look at some plants along the way. Okay, as you can see, uh, I've just hiked through sort of a, a dry ridge top dominated by oaks. And as we turn around, uh, I'm approaching the edge of the woodland and you can see that a bunch of eastern red cedars have started to appear. Uh, and that kind of signals the habitat transition that we'll be walking through. Okay, so we're now just on the uh, edge of this glade habitat. Uh, it looks like we have a few wildflowers here on the sides. We'll stop and take a look at those in just a moment. But again, as you can see, the, the eastern red cedars are much more common. They kind of mark the boundary between these two habitat types. And we're going to kind of walk through this transition in just a minute so that you can see the really stark difference between our, uh, our dry oak dominated woodland behind us and then what we'll be coming into, which is a limestone slope glade. Uh, before we get there, we're going to take a stop and look at some of the first wildflowers we've seen. Uh, it's, again, it's the first weekend in April, so it's very early. We're really only seeing uh, some of our earliest flowering spring species, but uh, the first one that grabs our attention here is Yolo pedata, so that's the bird foot violet. Comes up very early, it's fairly common across Kentucky, uh, occurs in dry woods, old fields, roadsides. Um, has very large flowers that can appear in a, a variety of colors, uh, purples, whites, even sometimes a combination of the two colors. And uh, it's usually pretty easy to, to identify by its uh, basal leaves that are very highly dissected uh, and lobed. And the other flower we have growing right with it uh, is uh, a really tiny bluette. Uh, so this is Houstonia carilla, and it's a member of the Rubiaceae, so that's the matter family. It has uh, four petals in a salver-formed corolla. Uh, so that's a tube that sort of flares at the end of it. Um, usually it has, this species has sort of a yellow dot in the center. Uh, they're very delicate, solitary flowers on these long individual peduncles. Um, a lot of other species of Houstonia uh, will have multiple flowers uh, on the same stem. And you can see it has these really tiny opposite leaves and this very small basal rosette. Uh, so that's Houstonia carula. Okay, so now we're gonna walk into the, uh, the opening of the glade. Uh, so I'm just going to let the scenery do the talking for a moment. But uh, one thing you'll probably notice right away is that the canopy is suddenly much more open than it was just a minute ago. And again, we have dense red cedars uh, kind of signaling this habitat transition into a drier environment. Um, up ahead, we see a blooming uh, red bud. So that's one that is probably common to a lot of, a lot of people watching this. Uh, the bright pink flowers uh, of this species are, are really easy to notice along roadways and things like that. Um, the species likes limestone soils. And as you can see, there's an abundance of uh, limestone outcro out, uh, outcropping here. And so we're gonna walk a little bit further And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about limestone openings in just a minute. But here we can see now we're in the glade habitat. And if I turn to my left, we can see this big grassland opening uh, that continues along this south facing slope. We move up a few steps to another opening. And here we go. You can see the big difference in the habitat uh, between the forested slopes, uh, north facing slopes across from us and then this really dry, grass-dominated, uh, south-facing slope that's underlain by limestone. And it looks like our tour is interrupted by a black rat snake who just hid under a rock. Um, and as we look around this glade, we can see that there are some seedlings of uh, eastern red cedar coming in. Uh, most of the time, uh, trees and shrubs are sort of uh, discouraged from growing in here just by the edaphic conditions. So that's sort of the uh, the characteristics of the soil, the chemistry, the moisture, 
uh, and, and the substrate all kind of combine to make a harsh environment for a lot of our uh, native woody species. But red cedar is one of the exceptions. And so in many cases, uh, fire also can play a role in maintaining this open grassland habitat uh, over time. Uh, so as I said earlier, there's a lot of exposed limestone uh, boulders in this type of habitat. And so I just wanted to point out a uh, cool fern that grows out of uh, this type of limestone crevice. This is uh, Pelea atropurpurea. Uh, so there's two species of Pelea in Kentucky. This one uh, is identifiable by its hairy uh, rachis. And it's uh, really striking, has a kind of a unique shape to it and uh, a very striking black rachis that you can kind of see from a distance. Uh, so just wanted to point this out. We're actually gonna uh, hike our way back through the dry oak woods to uh, another grassland opening and see what else is going on over there. Okay, so I've stopped in the woods uh, on the way to the next glade opening uh, to take a look at a tooth wart. So this is uh, Dentaria heterophylla, also uh, weekly goes by Cardamony angustata. And you can see that it has uh, <coughs> large basal leaves that are uh, trifoliate uh, that are present while the plant is still flowering. Uh, it has kind of our classic mustard flowers, uh, four petals with six stamens, uh, usually in a light, like light purple or white coloration. Um, and the sort of size difference between the basal leaves and the uh, upper pair of stem leaves is part of what points us in the direction of uh, Dentaria heterophylla, um, AKA Cardamony angustata. Okay, so after a short hike through the woods, I've arrived at the uh, next glade opening. This one is a smaller opening, but again, you can see behind me, uh, it's grass dominated. We have Eastern red cedars around us. Uh, there's lots of exposed uh, rock, shale, gravel, and boulders and things like that, that again, create the conditions that enable this habitat to persist. So I've stopped briefly at this uh, little rosette of a, an agave plant. So this is agave virginica or manfreda virginica is another name that botanists have called it. Uh, it is the only member of the agavaceae, so the agave family in Kentucky that is native to Kentucky. You'll also occasionally see yuccas, but uh, the only yucca species here are introduced. Uh, so this time of year, this plant is still easily identifiable because it'll form this tight little rosette um, that of these thick, waxy, fleshy leaves. So it's a succulent. We don't have that many succulents in the bluegrass state, so uh, this is one to keep an eye out for. And this is often an indicator of uh, high quality native grasslands, which are increasingly rare in Kentucky. All right, folks, we did it. We found another plant in bloom today at the beginning of uh, April. So this is Hori Pacoon. Uh, that would be Lithospermum canescens. It is a member of the Baraginaceae, so the borage family. And uh, most members of this family are pretty easy to recognize because uh, they will have five petals, uh, as you can see in this example here. And then they have very hairy uh, stems and leaves. Uh, they also will produce four nutlets, uh, but obviously since we're in flower, I don't have an example to show you there. But this species is uh, relatively common in dry woodlands, uh, in limestone glades, in other remnant prairies and also along dry roadsides where there is some, uh, sometimes some remnant native vegetation uh, occurring. Uh, the next plant we're looking at here is a blue-eyed grass. So this is Syrincum albidum. Uh, so it has a white flower. It's a member of the iris family. Uh, and it's kind of an easily overlooked plant when it's not flowering because it has these uh, narrow, very narrow grass-like stems uh, that, that really can blend in amongst the other vegetation. We're really lucky to have caught it in flower today. Uh, this species is really the only Cincyrhynchium that will occur in this type of uh, dry grassland habitat. That's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little hiking tour of this beautiful limestone slope uh, glade that's behind me. Uh, again, I just want to stress this is a really rare habitat in Kentucky. Um, I know we were a little early to see, see uh, a little more showy flowers and things like that, 
uh, but the uniqueness of this habitat with its uh, soil geology and unique fire history really uh, helps support a number of rare plant species, uh, regionally rare species, as well as in some cases globally rare species. Uh, so it is really important that we continue to conserve this type of habitat. Uh, and again, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.